Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, at least uh, for those of you in Portland, it's afternoon. Uh, I'm Martin Sedarius. I'm a professor and also the chair of the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering at Portland State University. Um, I want to uh, start by saying congratulations, graduates. Well done. And I want to uh, welcome all of you and your family members and friends uh, to the Electrical and Computer Engineering graduation celebration. Um, I'm very happy that you were all able to join us for this live um, uh, but online graduation celebration. Um, we'll start our program in just a moment uh, with a few words from the Dean of the Massey College of Engineering and Computer Science, Dr. Richard Corsi. And then we'll follow the Dean with short messages of congratulations, uh, starting with me and then uh, from other members of our faculty. Um, we will then present our master's uh, thesis and our PhD graduates and that'll be followed by presentation of the Master's of Science and Bachelor's of Science degrees in um, uh, computer engineering and electrical engineering. So uh, without further delay, uh, it's my pleasure to be able to introduce to you the Dean of our college, uh, Dr. Richard Corsi. So oh, thank you so much, uh, uh, Martin. I appreciate it very much. And I, Good, good afternoon and congratulations to all of our electrical engineering and computer engineering or electrical and computer engineering graduates. So we are very proud of you, I'm very proud of you. And I'd like to begin with a few words about the challenges that face uh, our nation, indeed our world today and, and how these relate to electrical and computer engineering uh, and how they relate to you moving forward in the future. So uh, after about 18 months or so, I guess we're all still battling a worldwide pandemic that has uh, caused far too many deaths around the world. One in every 600 Americans now has died of COVID-19 and it's even worse in some countries around the world. And, and these effects have been disproportionately felt by communities of color and the poor in the United States. And I also know the pandemic has, has, had an, it has made things incredibly difficult for many of our international students who who worry about faculty, uh, family back home and, 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 and who have not been able to travel home to see family at such a difficult time. So I think it's important that we acknowledge that. And I'm very proud of you uh, for sticking this out and for getting your degree at such a difficult time. In, in Portland and a lot of the Western United States, we've witnessed the first, firsthand uh, uh, kind of the devastating effects of climate change that will continue with drought and wildfires and uh, the worst wildfires in recorded history in Oregon and horrible air pollution that you can actually taste uh, when we have wildfires. And, and of course, in the United States, we're battling the ugly face and outcomes of racism and hatred in all of its forms against Black Americans, Asians, Asian Americans, Pacific Islanders, and others. And, and this has led to a lot of social unrest, the likes of which we haven't seen since I was a small child uh, over 50 years ago. So at this point, you're probably thinking, uh, Man, our dean is a total downer. But in fact, I have some really very good news. And that good news is you. Each and every one of our ECE graduates, to me, is very good news. Each of you has earned an incredibly powerful degree at this extraordinary time in history. Uh, the world's going to be bouncing back. Uh, and we need you. Your ability to be problem solvers, innovators, big thinkers, difference makers. Uh, you know, those skills are more important now than at any time in the past century. And I really mean that. I really do. Uh, and I've been around a long time. So you graduates uh, are going to probably make a greater difference in the world than engineering graduates ever have uh, in, in any country at this time. And times change rapidly. When I, was, when I graduated from college, the percentage of Americans with a computer in their homes was almost zero. I think it was about 2%. Rotary dial phones still outnumbered push button phones. Many of you probably don't even know what a rotary dial phone is, um, but times change rapidly and few envisioned a future with, you know, computer, phone, camera, entertainment, banking systems that we'd carry around in our pockets. When I was growing up, that was Star Wars stuff. Uh, that was just not something we could ever even envision. So imagine what the next 50 years will hold during your careers. During your careers, each of you will certainly use new, te new technologies. And I'm 100% certain that some of you that are on this Zoom meeting right now, many of you will develop important new technologies during your careers. Technologies related to, to green energy systems, 
imaging for autonomous vehicles, autonomous aircraft, environmental sensors, wearable devices for health, and, and I could go on and on and on much, much more. And you'll have opportunities to develop and, new, and use new technologies to, to transform society, improve and lift the human condition, the, the human experience. Uh, you'll have opportunities to save lives, to improve society in so many different ways, to, to transform economies of regions and countries. And, and also limit the impacts of climate change. So please don't take this lightly, but you, have, you are carrying away as graduates a skill set that's going to allow you to do great things. And the world needs you now, and future generations need you more than ever. So I'd like to offer four important bits of advice in closing based on a lot of experience during my career and also observations. And I think if you take this advice and combine it with the technical skills you gained, uh, during your education at Portland State University, you will almost you will almost have superpowers as you evolve in your career. So my bits of advice are following: one, listen and learn from others. As you move forward, listen to others, including those in different disciplines, including those with different life experiences and with different standings in society. Uh, if you do that, you're going to learn a lot, and and will make you a richer person, both in your personal life and your professional life. Number two is admit when you do not know something. I spent 25 years in Texas and there were a lot of sayings in Texas that I just loved. But my favorite saying in Texas was, was, was the following. Um, you can put your boots in the oven, but that don't make them biscuits. Think about that. Learn to say the words, I do not know. If you pretend you know and you really don't, It'll take away your credibility when you actually do have something important to say, when you actually do have good biscuits to serve. Admit you don't know it and then go and get the answer. Right? Number three, never make ethical compromises for money or for glory. High integrity will breed respect. It'll, it'll breed trust. And it'll also breed followers. And you can use those for social good because if you have high integrity, you'll become a leader. Right? And lead by making others around you shine. We don't talk about this enough, but it's so important. Help others when they need your help. Right? Share your successes with others. Never, ever take credit that is due to others. If you do, that, that kind of sticks with you and haunts you for your whole career. Be a bridge builder. Build bridges. Empower those around you. These are the characteristics of a, of a true leader and a successful leader. You know, and these are sometimes things we don't talk about during engineering education. You've got great skills, but it's important to, to, to think about those things that are leadership skills that you superimpose on top of your technical skills. If you do the things I just mentioned, you'll look back someday on an exemplary career. And if you use your education and your skills to help others, you'll look back someday on an exemplary life. And I promise you that to be the case. Your technical skill sets combined with the attributes of leadership will serve you well, but also allow you to make really deep and positive impacts on everyone around you, on society and on the planet. So, so graduates, I'm so very proud of you. I really am. Uh, and I speak on behalf of the entire Massey College of Engineering and Computer Science. Uh, we'll be watching you with, you with pride. And so I hope you go forth now and, and make us even prouder in the future. Thank you and, and congratulations again for a job very well done. Thank you, Dean Corsi. Very good advice. Um, I'll start my message um, by again saying congratulations, 2021 graduates. Yeah, you're going to hear that. You're going to hear congratulations quite a few times today from us and also likely from your family and friends over the next few days and weeks. And you should enjoy it. Soak it up. You deserve to hear it many more times. You've managed to complete your degree during this global pandemic. And if you think about that, I mean, that alone deserves quite a bit of congratulations. But I don't want you or us to define what you've done by the pandemic. That's, that's not all you did. And I know you graduates all already know this, but um, for the rest of you out there, they're listening. The, our degree programs are really difficult and even under the best of conditions. And the last year has been, you know, very challenging. 
but you've managed to get through it. Our goal as a department is not about making the degrees easy, but it's about preparing you graduates for successful careers in electrical and computer engineering. And that requires hard work and dedication on your part. There's just no way around that. Um, you know, it's not like we have all this education completely figured out, but we do try, um, and we talk about this quite a bit, we try our best to develop a curriculum that doesn't only teach you some of the, of the basic ECE skills, which is what we, we try to do, we, but we also want to uh, educate you for success throughout your career. So what does that mean? Well, to prepare you for this future, we want to start by, we try to educate you um, about the, fun, the foundational principles of ECE. But if you know those foundational principles, you can adapt to changing technology. That's one part of it. But we want to go beyond that. And what we've tried to do is to be able to um, have you learn how to be problem solvers and to think critically and to be a team player and to innovate and to know how to collaborate. And maybe most importantly, be able to effectively communicate the things that you do, your work and your research, whether that's in written form or with oral presentations. The specific skills you learn are gonna change over time, but many other parts of engineering you've learned here are gonna persist for your entire career. Um, in our department, we, we do a lot of project-based learning and we, do, we try very hard to get all of our students to do at least one internship. Why do we do that? It's because we, we, we feel like that, that those are uh, critically important for testing, for learning all the bits that are, you're gonna need for your career. And in the last year, the pandemic has made those particular parts of our curriculum, that is projects and internships, that part has become even more challenging. But you've gotten all through, you've all come through that. And that's amazing. Um, but, and I would argue that you're, you, you know, that there is a silver lining that, that you've, um, when you've come through this, that a lot of the things that we've done this last year are here to stay. I think we're likely to see a lot more remote work, uh, a lot more video conferencing, a lot more use of the online collaborative tools that you all have become so familiar with this last year. And so, you know, this is all part of what we hear, we've been hearing a lot about the future of work. And this is part of it. And you're right at the, at the front of this. Um, there, there are, you, know, you can think about all, a lot of the jobs that we have today that didn't even exist. We weren't even thinking about 10 years ago. And you can expect the same thing to happen in 10 years. There's going to be very different jobs that we haven't thought of. And you've got to be prepared for that now with all, your, all the, that you're learning and taking away from here. The futures you, got, you graduates are, are entering is different from what we even imagined just a couple of years ago, in large part due to the way we've changed the way we work. But that's what we're thinking about when we, when we hand you the degree is your long-term success. But overall, I think it's an exciting time to be working in ECE. And I think the Dean just captured a lot of that. I think there's good reason to uh, think about EC, a career in ECE having a bright future. Last week, we had our uh, senior capstone presentations and I was blown away by many of these projects. The ability to, for these teams to not only complete the projects, during a pandemic, and that was amazing all by itself, but I was impressed by how polished and professional the presentations were. And I, I said, I'm impressed. I'm not surprised by this. I was impressed by it though. And as department chair, I've started as department chair this last year, and I've, um, I hear a lot more from industry now. And what I often hear from, from what I hear from industry is over the overwhelming majority say our students are among the best they hire from all universities across the country and across the world. So, um, so in case you haven't, uh, uh, you couldn't tell from what I've said, I'm very optimistic about your future. You're well prepared and we're very proud of you. And we're proud that you're going out with ECE degrees from Portland State University from our department. So one more time, congratulations. Okay, and now um, we have uh, um, messages from others in our, in our faculty, and we'll present those now. Hi, this is Xiao Yi Song. Congratulations to class 2021. I'm very glad to have an opportunity to teach and know some of you. 
and uh, we are very proud of your achievement. I wish you all the best for your future and come back to have your graduate study for a master or PhD degree. See you soon. Hello, this is Doug Hall. I just wanted to, first of all, say congratulations to all of the students who are completing their bachelor's degree uh, at this point. And it is a challenging program and you've done well and hope it serves you well in your career. I do encourage you to come back for and join us for a master's degree because it makes a big improvement in your uh, career path. And also, I want to say thank you for the people who took 371 from me for putting up with my sense of humor. And I hope that you will remember the five minute rule and the fast and slow rule as you go forward. For the graduate students that I've worked with a great many of you on course selections and resumes and uh, internships and full time jobs and uh, how do you function as an engineer. Uh, I wish you the best in moving forward and congratulate you on uh, getting through a very uh, challenging program. Now, the, normally in the, at this point, what I would be doing if we're in a regular graduation ceremony is I to celebrate and congratulate you on completing a, a graduate degree. I, uh, for all of the coursework only master's students, I would be putting the academic hood on their uh, uh, system so to celebrate and congratulate them. Obviously, I can't do that in person this time, but I'd like to just virtually put the hood on you and that you can take this with you, that you have done really well in completing this program and to celebrate it with you. And I wish you the best as you go forward. And as uh, an old friend of mine once said, live long and prosper. Uh, and as you go forward on the next steps of your career path. Congratulations to the class of 2021 graduates from Professor Fu Li. You graduated in one of the most difficult years with consecutive five terms delivered online, with your capstone project conducted remotely, with your thesis or dissertation defended over internet. Some of you have been in the opposite time zone around the world. Those extreme circumstances caused extreme difficulty to all of you, but also testified the extraordinary strengths that all of you have. With that strength, you will be successful in your career and life in future. So be proud of yourself. Be thankful to your parents, to your peers, and to the communities. Best luck to each and every one of you. Congratulations to the class of 2021. We in the EC department here at PSU wish you the best of luck in your future endeavors. May your ECE experience contribute to your future success. And you are always welcome and encouraged to contact us in the EC department throughout your career. Congratulations. I am so proud of you. You've not only graduated with a really impressive degree, but you've done it under the most difficult circumstances. You have the skills, the resiliency, the adaptability to do whatever you set your mind to. I cannot wait to see what you're going to accomplish. So congratulations, stay in touch with us and wish you all the best.
Hi, class of 2021. Congratulations. I am so proud of you. Keep up the good work, and I wish you all the best in the next chapter of your life. From this moment on, you are joining our expanded PSU ECE alumni network here in the Silicon Forest and beyond. Let's keep in touch and be sure to share with us your success story to inspire our future ECE students. Hi everyone, I'm David Burnett, and most of you probably don't recognize me because I just joined the ECE faculty at the start of this academic year. Despite the pandemic though, I was fortunate enough to work with a couple dozen students in some capacity, mostly through teaching courses, but also by advising capstone projects and uh, a few individual research projects pertaining in one way or another to my research area, which is wireless sensor systems. From those students, I've gotten one overarching impression and that this year was a struggle, especially in a field that focuses so much on hands-on lab work. And it's been incredible to see everyone adapt and make the best of a bad situation. I'm glad to have been able to work with at least a, a few out there uh, during this horrendous year. And I'm so proud of what you've been able to accomplish, especially in these circumstances. Congratulations and best of luck in the future. Hi graduates, if you've taken a class from me in the past few years, you recognize this lab bench in the background. It's been a real privilege to serve as both your professor and lab partner during this shared remote learning adventure. Best of luck to each of you, congratulations on a job well done, and I hope to see you in person when campus opens up in the fall. Hello graduates of uh, 2021. Uh, for those of you who may not know me, my name is Brano, Branimir Pejcinovic. Many of you may know me as Dr. B. <clears throat> I'm going to Take a long time. I just want to congratulate you on on finally graduating. Uh, that's a big accomplishment, especially given the special circumstances and the difficult times that we all went through during the last year, year and a half. So, um, I congratulate you on your perseverance and again these trying and difficult times. Uh, I will only say, you know, that you have you know career options and. I wish you best of luck there. Um, I hope you will not be strangers, you know, come back, visit us, see how things are going. And I'm sure we will always welcome you to come back and see what's new at PSU and ECE department. With that, good luck and hope to see you later. Okay, thank you faculty. Um, now the next part of our program, uh, faculty advisors will present the degrees for our MS thesis and our PhD students. Congratulations, Dr. Rasika Joshi. I have known Rasika for over five years. <clears throat> Her dissertation title is Memristor Crossbar Array Testing Using Sneak Paths. Memristor devices have unique characteristics that require special testing techniques. Those techniques have been provided by Rasika's research. She was a great contributor to the information security and digital system testing research group. She made excellent comments on the other student PhD students research, in spite of there not being an overlap with her work. She helped them practice their proposal presentations and made great comments. She has continued to work with me on her research beyond finishing her PhD. I am proud to have been 
Dr. Rasika Joshi's advisor. Again, congratulations. Now, it is my pleasure to take a moment talking about this year, my PhD graduate, Si Yuan Yan, also known as Luis. Luis received his bachelor's degree from North University of China and his master's degree from Stevens Institute of Technology in New Jersey. In 2014, he joined PSU as a PhD student and a graduate teaching assistant. Over the last several years, working with me and other faculty and the fellow student of his as well, Luis authored and co-authored more than 10 journal articles, nine published already and a couple more under review. This is an unusual research accomplishment by any measure at any university. Luis is also a great TA, well liked by the instructors and the students in the classes. Luis held internship at Tektronix three times where he gained practical knowledge. So overall, he is a very well-rounded graduate. I am very proud of him and I'm confident that he will be successful in his future career. I wish Luis very best. Congratulations, Luis. Congratulations, Jihad, on earning your master's of science in electrical and computer engineering. It is my pleasure to present to you for your master's of science degree. Um, I'd like to thank you for being such a great graduate student, as well as a fantastic graduate teaching assistant, um, having taught in the Power Systems Protection Lab and Power Systems One and Power Systems Two, and having made great contributions to those uh, courses and some sheer research. But it's really the research that we're here to celebrate most, particularly the thesis that you wrote. Um, Shahad's thesis is entitled Power Distribution, Power Distribution System Tools for Analyzing Impacts of Projected EV Load Growth. For her work, uh, Shahad developed a suite of tools, software tools, that distribution engineers can use for projecting how electric vehicle growth will negatively impact distribution systems. And these tools could then be used by planners, by power systems distribution engineer planners to change the system in anticipation of these loads. So in addition to developing these tools, Shahad also developed a realistic modeling environment within which she could test these tools. And she validated those tools according to the um, objectives she set out for those tools at the very beginning. So um, it's my pleasure again to congratulate you, Shahad, on earning your master's of science. And I certainly uh, wish you the best of luck going into the future. Congratulations, Stefano. Stefano Sotola's MS thesis title was a method for comparative analysis of trusted execution environments. His investigation and comparison of Intel's SGX, ARM's trust zone, and the RISC-V physical memory protection led to his developing <clears throat> a general method for analyzing the characteristics of trusted execution environments, which all hardware architects <clears throat> can use to formalize their product design decisions with respect to trusted execution environments. Stefano was an enthusiastic researcher and a valuable contributor to our research group as a whole. Congratulations, Stefano, on creating an excellent MS thesis.
Congratulations, Jagir, on both your hard work and all your accomplishments. You've really come a long way since our first meeting in my office when you knew nothing about machine learning and were just getting interested in our signal processing track. And since then, you've done a great job both on your coursework as well as your thesis project, working on a sponsored project through the Navy, uh, predicting ship traffic using neural networks. It's really great to see uh, all the hard work you've put in and all the things you've learned along the way. And I'm uh, proud of both your accomplishments in your master's thesis and your ability to get a great job at Intel. So good luck in everything going forward and congratulations again. Congratulations, Rob, on earning your master's of science in electrical and computer engineering. It's my pleasure to present you for your MS thesis degree. Um, and I'm going to mention, um, I've known Rob for over a decade now. Uh, Rob earned his first bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering from Purdue, Purdue University. And I met him when he was pursuing his bachelor's of science in renewable energy and engineering at the Oregon Institute of Technology here in Portland. Rob earned that degree and then went on to become a distribution automation engineer with Portland General Electric, um, where he has been since then. Um, and during that time, uh, he decided to pursue his master's in electrical and computer engineering uh, with me at Portland State University. Um, Rob has been pursuing this uh, thesis work for a number of years now while working full time and raising his son. Um, and he has certainly earned his thesis. Um, <clears throat> Rob's thesis is entitled um, A Method for Modeling the Swing Equation Using Time Synchronized Measurements. So, Rob's thesis work focuses on using um, readily available and high fidelity phasor measurement data to derive what's called the swing equation, which is a way for characterizing how the system, the power system responds to transient events. And this is incredibly important when considering the stability of our system. So in addition to developing a method for uh, developing, for writing, for, for deriving the swing equation based on these data, uh, Rob also delved into an historical perspective within his thesis that reached back to over 130 years and within which he grounded his work and it was pretty, uh, pretty exciting and amazing. Um, so anyway, uh, congratulations, Rob. Uh, you've certainly uh, earned this degree and I look forward to working with you in future. Congratulations, Philippe. You joined my team in the summer 2019 and started working on a Defense Threat Reduction Agency, or DITRA, funded research project on energy efficient on chip analysis for radiation detection applications by using neuromorphic algorithms and systems. You very quickly took a leadership role in this project and focused on the uh, specific subtopic of radiation source search which was an important aspect of this project. You very closely collaborated with our partners at the University of New Mexico. Uh, you went to program review meetings uh, in Washington, DC and represented our team and did a great job there. Uh, you had to learn a lot of new things about radiation detection, neuromorphic algorithms, machine learning, and signal processing. And many of these things are not just things you could learn in a class. Uh, you had to go a lot deeper. And you uh, now have wrapped up uh, and graduated with a thesis on proximal policy automation for radiation search, where you proposed a new and uh, efficient uh, reinforcement learning based algorithm of uh, localizing radiation sources. Congratulations again, great job. Thank you for all the contributions on this uh, important project. Congratulations, Jacob, on earning your master's of science in electrical and computer engineering. For those of you joining us, uh, Jacob Sheeran has been working in my lab for the past two years as a graduate research assistant. Prior to that, he earned his bachelor's of science in electrical and computer engineering from Portland State University uh, with a power engineering focus. Jacob has been working in my lab um, on a PGE sponsored project, specifically looking into the impacts of electric vehicles on load growth using a modeling tool 
uh, called SIME that is commonly used in industry, uh, specifically by Portland General and other utilities. Jacob's thesis title is Modeling Tools for Analyzing Electric Power Distribution Systems Impacted by Electric Vehicle Load Growth. And the idea behind this work is to develop a suite of tools specifically for the SIME environment and to test them uh, within um, a realistic distribution system model. Um, and uh, to provide these tools to distribution system planners so that they can project and anticipate and make changes to uh, their distribution system based on these anticipated um, impacts. So Jacob, that's been fantastic work. Um, as you know, we continue to work on this project uh, with PG, you and I and Nathan. Um, and I just wanna take this uh, moment to congratulate you and uh, let you know that I look forward to working with you in future. So good luck. Congratulations, Sean. I've really enjoyed working with you and learning about graphs, hyperspectral target detection, and the fact that you share a birthday with Stephen Wilson. I really appreciate your methodical approach to problem solving, and I'm excited that you've decided to stay on with me and do a PhD. So congratulations again on all your accomplishments, and I'm looking forward to spending another three to five or maybe seven more years working with you. All right. That was great. Thank you all. Um, I see we have a, a good audience on YouTube. That's great. And a lot of activity um, going on in the chat. That's, that's fantastic. We love it. Um, and the next section we have is that uh, uh, Professor John Lepore will, um, will introduce the individuals for the Master of Science and the Bachelor of Science in Computer Engineering and Electrical Engineering. Aluwashion Aregoke. Angelin Alfred. Amrutha Anil. Lakitha Alturu. Ram Prakash Baskar. Tapasya Bhatnagar. Ram Bhattarai. Balab Vinayak Budkar. Edison Christopher Changala. Dawei Che. Sharania Durgadasa. Apiraj Abai Kumar Exambekar. Jayanth. Gauri Bidadanur Prakash. Rali Gulapali. David Hansen. Rihari Hebur Sethuram. Tyler Hull. Barish Age Inan. William Isidort.
Sungavi, Jakumpati, Kalairasan. Subhash Kola. Nima Kumari. Srinivasa Rao Mukarat Raju. Nai Mahadevaya. Nai Mahada Kamali Arthanda Pillai. Practice ready, Mothe. Practice ready, Mothe. John Paul, Nisha. Alaka. Ethan Manoj Lata Parmar Viti Patel Rituja Patil Nasi Denai Patil Calvin Harrison Hall Kupash Hawar Panindra Sai Ayush Ravi Chandran Oliver Rue Don Riemann Divya Jyothi Rola Ivanka Prakash Murthy Avinash Reddy Sangam Rishitosh Sawant Gaurav Ramakant Shinoi Shah Shetty Ashwin Suresh Kruthi Mai Bala Banani Rajesh Banapalu
Subraj Bastra. Matthew Walters. Enting Yang. Following students will receive a Bachelor's of Science in Computer Engineering. Victor Alvaran Sanchez. Joshua Blazik. Lan Gonzalez. Katie Lowski. Devin Michaels. You smell Pradera Martinez. Adam Provost. Tiffany Schiltz. Tamar Stiegler. The following students will receive a Bachelor's of Science in Electrical Engineering. Abdehal al Inezi. Faisal Al-Ghazali. Ahmed Al-Kunaizi. Ahmed Alothaimin. Jose Alvarez. Ryan Arch. Marcus Shalona. Lucias Cruz Asuncion. Andrew Forsman. Landon Hanks. Jacob Houlihan. Jennifer Jordan. Christopher Mersman. Wang Nguyen. Edgar Ortiz Nino. Seth Rorba. Evie Strohmeyer. Dylan Wangrud. Jacob White. Martina Yakub. IT Yao. Masing Yungbe. Zamora Pacheco. Yu Hang Ju. Thank you, John. Um, that was great. Uh, sorry about the 
little minor glitches there, but that's what makes it live so much fun. Um, some of those quotes were, were really good. Thank you all for, for providing those. Um, that concludes our program. Um, I just want to thank all of you that participated and for and to those that uh, that watched and joined us. Um, I also want to just take a second to thank the EC staff for organizing all this. Uh, Rochelle Bredo, Nate Rose, Kylie Green, Maria Ruiz Mata. And I also want to uh, acknowledge and thank uh, Sean Keen and Ryan Rusby, our technical directors for this. And now I'll end. Um, I want to be the first to welcome you all as graduates to uh, all, all you graduates as the newest members of our alumni. And I hope all of you will always feel connected to PSU and to ECE and will continue to stay in touch with us and come back and visit. So congratulations. Thank you all and good evening.